Hello, my name is Avery from Candid. Um, I want to give you guys a little bit of a show, show around how we use clay. Um, okay, so just to, to start briefly, um, we sell software for uh, brands and showrooms and distributors that sell wholesale. Um, so you basically use Candid kind of the way you might use Shopify, but for your B2B customers. Um, and that creates a, a, a number of kind of interesting issues. Um, in particular, wholesale is kind of a tricky thing to search for. Specifically, they, they don't really have software for it now. Um, so we have a couple of different issues that we use Clay to solve. Um, first is there are a lot of companies that do this and finding people who work at those companies um, so that we can do uh, outbound email and contact um, is always tricky. And we, it can be time consuming. The second is that uh, wholesale is basically an activity. It's not really an identity. So you can't look for wholesale companies until you end up with like janitorial supplies or something like that. Um, instead, you're looking for uh, folks who sell everything from crackers to beautiful apparel and kids clothes and games and toys. Um, and so we want to find out um, because not every company that sells toys sells them wholesale. Um, some of them are just retailers which means that they buy wholesale, not sell wholesale. Um, so how do we discriminate between these people? Um, we had trained our SDRs to do it, and it's, it's a pretty lengthy training process, and you've got to kind of develop a nose for it. Um, and you have to learn a whole bunch about how to look at a website and see what they do and whether they wholesale and what words they use, and it's, it's just a hassle. It also takes a lot of time. Um, so we wanted to automate all of that. So enter Clay. Um, all right, I don't know how to make this. There we go, go away. Um, all right, so let's just say um, I am looking, I'm an SDR and I'm looking around um, and I find this website. I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool. Now, without clay, this is what I would do. I'd poke around and I'd be like, okay, do these guys sell wholesale? I don't know, there's, there's a store locator. That's usually a good sign. Um, check out the contact page. Uh, okay, so here we go. There's like a, a, a form over on this other website. It's just all a little confusing. So I, may, I don't know. I got I to gotta look at this particular page and track it down. Um, we also sell to, um, in particular, to folks who use certain web technologies, Shopify, Squarespace, WooCommerce in particular. Um, so let's, let's speed this whole thing up. Basically, you take this, this uh, page here. I'm just going to grab the URL. And we have an Airtable. Um, I just stuff that in the website page. Who is it going to be assigned to? Me. Go for enrichment, any kind of source or anything. I can add additional um, kind of manual fields. If I know somebody's email, I can start with that uh, segment, which is a, a handy thing. Um, and then good. Cool. Great. Get on right on that. Thanks. Okay. Um, that then goes from Zapier over to Clay. Um, and that company gets kicked off in our enrichment process. That takes it's kind of two steps. Um, I did this earlier so that you don't have to wait, but um, our inputs are company name, website, source, manual emails in case they have, like somebody's looking at, they're sitting there, they've got the email, somebody told them, hey, email me, um, then we can enter, we don't have to rely on it. Um, the Who the HubSpot owner is gonna be, um, their Slack username figures that out. Um, so then we, we get we get going. First, we normalize the domain name. Um, I love that feature. It's just a really, it's simple, but it's a big one. Um, we then have this key. I do this all over the place, which is that um, I use formulas to output a particular field. But then uh, by doing that, you're able to do, for instance, like an import. If you know what all the domains are and they're all cleaned up, you can just kind of overwrite that particular field. Um, and this is the field we use for that. Um, I do a funny workaround to find whether or not we've already enriched this. We don't want to burn credits for no reason. Um, and then we've got a checkbox basically to override that if we want, so to, to manually run the enrichment. This will be false if, um, if there are duplicates. We then check our own database to see if this company exists. This is a huge deal. <laughs> Finding out whether or not this company is in our Postgres database, that's, that's massive. Um, we then do a couple enrichments. I we do these three: Apollo, um, LinkedIn, and Clay. Um, this one, the Clay didn't find anything, but Apollo and, and LinkedIn did. Um, Apollo is cool, but it's got weird rate limiting stuff, so it's perfect for onesies, twosies, and like if you're going to do less than whatever 100 to 200 an hour, it's 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 good. Um, 
pulls out a very bunch of different interesting stuff. And then we do, then we do go into our the Google portion of our show, which uh, does four very specific and unusual searches um, that I learned actually in the Clay uh, Slack. One is finding whether or not there is a site on their uh, a page on their site that includes um, the word wholesale. Um, or there are a couple of others. And then another is to see whether there's a link on their page that has the word wholesale. And then I check to see if there's another page that has keywords um, having to do with wholesale. And then another one <laughs> that does whether there's a, a page on their site that has a title, including wholesale, B2B, stockist, things like that. Um, then we take the first one of those results. In this case, it's wholesale shoes, which she helpfully or they helpfully um, spelled wrong. This is supposed to be shows. <laughs> um, so as you can see, this is like all the trade shows that they're that they happen to be going through. Now this isn't linked anywhere on their site, as far as I can tell. Um, so that's super interesting that they um, that they have it there. Um, so that's a that's a really handy thing to have. Um, we then scrape that particular page, um, which uh, in this case is a lot. So it it, it but basically it um, it scrapes their page. And then goes through and checks whether their Shopify site. Um, we have Shopify, Squarespace, or WooCommerce. So we check in this field um, to see whether they're one of those supported platforms or not. Um, if it's compatible, that we get they get this check mark. That's really helpful to get over to HubSpot. Um, that's another step that used to be manual. You go in here, you check in Wappalizer. Okay, there's Squarespace. Great. Now I'm going to have to hand enter that somewhere else. Just a ton of data entry. Um, we then um, extract any matches from there if they gave us emails to start with, find contacts and clear bit, um, do a, uh, grab the LinkedIn URL. We do sort of a waterfall here, which is like, um, if we, if they, if we find one in the first enrichment, then use it. If we find the second one enrichment, third enrichment, et cetera, <clears throat> long story short, found four emails from Hunter also. Um, then we combine all the emails from Clearbit and Hunter and the manual ones into a list. And here we've got, came up with seven unique emails. Um, and we also, from that scrape page, we also use ones from there. So we have seven unique emails um, and a phone number, um, number of employees, the description of the company, la di da. Then we look them up in HubSpot. Um, if they haven't, if they're already in HubSpot, we'll update them, but we won't overwrite the owner. So that's, that was a really helpful step, which is like all this complicated logic that you'd have to train someone to do. Um, then we update, and then they'd have to do it right every time and remember, which is impossible. Um, so then we update, if it's unassigned, um, we either create it or we update it with a new owner if necessary. Then we get the HubSpot ID. Then we use a, feel, a feature that's currently in beta um, called um, uh, Write to Table. <clears throat> and that takes the list of emails that we have over here, this unique list of emails, um, and it sends it to another table to enrich the individual people. Um, and it creates seven rows over there. So let's go over to that one. Um, now, da, 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 over to our email enricher. Great. Okay. Um, so what that does here, it's, it takes from the, from the company enricher. We then get email and domain and source, et cetera. Um, and, and the company ID from HubSpot, that's really helpful to link everything together at the end. Um, and the owner ID if necessary. Then we get, um, we find the, um, uh, we, we do some lookups. We get check to see whether or not we're already enriching it. Don't want to do it twice. Um, we check to see whether they're a user in our own database. Um, we enrich people, enrich people, enrich people, enrich people, enrich people. Do another lookup for <laughs> to check things in our database, which that itself is just extremely difficult. Our SDRs don't actually have access to the list of every single person who's in our database. That would be creepy. So. Um, so we have the ability to look them up and make sure that we're not sending someone into our sales channel that's already in Candid, either a user on the buyer or the seller side. Um, we pull up, up a bunch of other things, and then we do two different um, email bounce checks, one through a system called Abstract, which there isn't a, a Clay integration, um, but uh, we're able to do that with the HTTP API, um, and then another one in SendGrid. Each of those give us a score. So we take each of these two and, um, and, and get a score based on that um, and average them, which is really nice because um, sometimes one is sure it's not an email address, the other is sure it's not an email address. But we also get this thing called role address. 
Uh, and that is like customer service at support at et cetera, as opposed to Haley and John. Um, and so the role email addresses, we know, okay, don't hello support at sticker giant. Um, <laughs> we don't want to do that. Instead, we want to say, uh, Hey Haley and Hey John. But, um, so we get to kind of take those role addresses and treat them differently in our sequences and stuff. We've got a bad email thing. This just, if it's really just a garbage email, we'll see here, like this is not, they really agree that this is not a valid email. So that helps us uh, avoid bounces. Um, and then, uh, we add stuff to HubSpot, creates the contacts and links it together with the, um, initial uh, company that we enriched over here, um, over here. Ta -da. So when that's all done, it then sends a Slack notification to give people updates um, and basically to tell them, hey, we're done with the enrichment. Here's the link to HubSpot. Um, here's the company. Here's how many contacts we found. Um, and it, it asks them in Slack. And if also, um, if it turns out that that company already existed, we tell them that. And if we tell them that uh, also that it's owned by somebody else so that they can work it out, either they're enriching the same a company that's already done um, or uh, maybe it, is should be reassigned um but they get to just deal with that occasionally uh, instead of having to look everything up and just just process 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 um so in in summary um what does this look like from for an sdr um it means that they just browse around the web find a website they think might wholesale they add it to a form and they're done <laughs> uh, they get Slack notifications and everything's done. Everything is added to HubSpot, fully enriched with as much data as we can find based on our special rules, um, including uh, all these crazy Google searches that, that make it really easy for us to tell, hey, maybe this company doesn't wholesale at all um, and helps us score and prioritize folks that we know are a good fit, um, makes our outbound a lot more effective, makes the whole process super duper smooth. Um, and yeah. Uh, that's one of the ways <laughs> that we use Clay. Super happy with it. Thanks, Clay team. You guys are the best.